right data structures and algorithms in 2024 i do one video every year where i share my thoughts on dsa uh, how did i learn it how much do i use it today how much is it asked in remote software development interviews and do you need it really if you want to you know get a remote job fang otherwise we'll talk about all of that in this video let's get right into it the first point to keep thinking about how did i learn dsa what has been my journey with the dsa I started doing DSA back in 2014, basically when I joined college. Um, the language of choice for me was C++ and this was the only thing I coded for around six months. Basically did not know what dev is slash how to do dev. Um, after six months is when I got into a college group and started doing development. But until then, only algorithmic problems solving back then on Spodge and a little bit of, I heard about code forces, I don't even remember when I start do it, started doing it. Um, but a combination of these two is what I did for the longest time to get into data structures and algorithms. Slowly, my motivation to do DSA increased a lot when I heard about ICPC and the fact that you can go to a foreign trip if you are going to World Finals. Um, never made it to World Finals, but at least there was a good goal to keep in mind. Um, in 2015 and 2016, pretty aggressively prepared for ICPC. One of these years I went to the regionals, I totally forgot which one. Um, and then 2016 onwards, my interest pretty much dwindled. 2016 and 2017, whatever was my last year preparing for ICPC or participating in ICPC, did really bad, had a really bad team, no preparation at all. Basically got into dev full time since then. So how many years did I do DSA end to end? If I had to put a number on it, I think I did it for two years with a decent amount of consistency. Um, and I did it in my final or pre-final semester for around six months. This was purely interview preparation. This was purely. ICPC preparation. So that has been my high level journey of doing data structures and algorithms. Never did data structures and algorithms after this. Um, this created a basic foundation for me so that over the years, whatever interviews I've had, I've been able to do well in them without re-preparing or, you know, going down the lead code grind route. That's point number one. Point number two is how much of it is asked in remote software development interviews. I divide this into three parts, freelancing platforms. That's platforms like TopTal, ad hoc companies, basically small companies, no CTO for a small CTO, two person team, not raised a lot of funds, big company, seed to series A company, all remote freelancing platforms, very hard. Um, I would say if I've had one hard interview in data structures and algorithms, it's been my top tal interview, um, ad hoc companies, no DSA, big companies, uh, one very easy round. So basically for this and this, you don't even worry about DSA. Uh, if you've done very basic DSA preparation in college, if you've gone through the standard lead code preparation, I think you're pretty much sorted for these two. You're not sorted for freelancing platforms, um, specifically TopTal, if I'm being honest. There is no other freelancing platform I've interviewed for four or five now that asks DSA this heavily as TopTal does, but the TopTal interview is pretty aggressive. All of my friends have been rejected in the DSA round, whoever I've referred. So this is the only place where I felt my DSA preparation helped me in getting a remote job. Third point, butterfly effect of data structures and algorithms. It seems like a very small thing, but at least in my life, it has played a pretty big part. This is basically a personal story to share. K, I never would have left on-site jobs or Goldman basically if I did not have TopTal for me to, you know, if I did not have a remote job or more specifically top tile back then. Um, and my top tile interview, as I said, was extremely hard when it comes to data structures and algorithms. So if I did not do DSA back in college, I pretty much wouldn't have gotten into a top tile, which might have led to me not doing remote jobs at all. So basically, if you're of the thinking, okay, you know, I don't want to do DSA, I only want to do dev. A lot of times good dev companies also end up asking DSA and you might miss out on that good opportunity just because you did not prepare DSA, which is, you know, just a necessary evil you have to go through. So in my life, it has played a decent part. If I would have formed my top tier interview, a lot of things in my life would have been different. Um, so keep that in mind. There might be that one random opportunity that you might miss out on purely because you did not do DSA back in college or you know, otherwise. So, so keep that in mind. Even though remote jobs may, DSA is not that difficult. In that one company, it just might be. All right, next point, how to learn DSA. I've divided this into a few parts. The first point is consistency is key. Don't do DSA or anything in life uh, half-heartedly. And you will be very consistent if you have some end goal in mind. So maybe have an end goal of an ICPC in mind, maybe create teammates or a team for that. Uh, generally learning in small groups helps. Uh, and if you have that one core ICPC team, there might be one really smart person here. That was one person in my team as well, who eventually did go to uh, world finals. That guy, you know, can increase your learning curve by a lot. So 
find a team early and aim for icpc um do hard problems very easy to do the same problems again and again do do that solve a lot of contests and more specifically after a contest which could be on code forces or otherwise uh, make sure you're up solving a lot so you're learning something new and lastly world finals always have an edge um keep this in mind uh, a person who's gone to acm icbc world finals if they want they can always you know get a fine job which is like the bare minimum that they'll get so it does not hurt to have world finals uh, on your resume it's actually a really big thing so if you do really well and if luck is on your side you might reach acm icbc world finals which as i said has a snowball effect on your career and even if you don't reach there if you go through this grind of you know preparing for icbc um, you will reach a stage at which you don't have to prepare for algorithmic interviews again which is a great situation to be in this brings me to my next point which is as time goes by uh, it will be harder and harder for you to go back to lead code and solve things again this stands very closely with an analogy that my friend gave me which is if you cannot take out 30 minutes for your body for gym in college you will not be able to do it after college life only gets harder you only get busier and that is true for dsa as well if you're in college you have a lot of free time make sure you've built up your fundamentals correctly so that as time goes by you will not need dsa but you will need it when you're switching from one company to another and there is a good chance that in your career of a few years you're switching companies um so you don't want to go back to the notebook and you know start re-preparing for dsa you should have enough knowledge by then okay you have your fundamentals are sorted and you can solve problems via first principles so this is the right time as early as you can learn and you know get away with dsa uh, which is a necessary evil do it and eventually as life goes by you will 99.9% not ever use dsa uh, especially the complex algorithms that you are learning for solving code forces drd but if you solve those problems uh, you can easily get through any data structure algorithm interview in your life span which is a great situation to be in last point i am going to share a few questions that have been asked to me in remote job interviews i am basically going to divide it into two parts ad hoc company interview this was actually a big company um series a um and freelancing platform interview this one was a one hour interview i solved it in 45 minutes the problem was you have been given a bunch of files for example slash desktop slash desktop slash a.png slash documents slash um b slash c slash d dot jpeg so on and so forth and you have to print out this in a nice file structure basically if you run the ls command recursively whatever you will see as the file structure you need to print it out for example it would basically look something like this desktop and then here inside a dot png with like a tab space of 2 and then you know if there's another desktop here it will be c d and then e dot png so on and so forth you basically need to print out all of these files in a nice directory structure that's inundated based on which directory you're in pretty simple problem ad hoc problem um i think you can solve it fairly easily um there were a few variations to it i remember this was the easy thing that was asked and then there was some difficult bit i don't really remember you know you had to put dashes here or something i totally forgot basically an easy ad hoc problem on the other hand um the freelancing platform they ask hard interviews they ask hard problems uh, basically the problem that i remember which i'm if i'm being honest sort of forgetting um because i was trying to solve this before this recording this video and i'm unsure if my solution will work but it was either a 3 cross 3 or a 4 cross 4 grid most probably it was 4 cross 4 but i might be missing something um and given the grid you've been given basically an initial configuration with numbers from you know 1 to 9 and a final configuration uh, with numbers from 1 to 9 again but you know 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it's pretty random basically and you have to go from here to here in the minimum number of operations one operation being you either swap horizontally or swap vertically basically if 3 goes from here to here and 4 goes from here to here that's one operation or if you know 7 goes from here to here and 8 goes from here to here that's another operation you can basically swap numbers that are adjacent to each other um this is considered as a single swap or a single operation give out the minimum number of operations in which you can go from here to here and if there is no variation in which you can go from here to here print out minus 1 i think this can be solved via you know some either dp or graphs basically create every variation as a node of a graph and then do a bfs um, to go from here to here i'm unsure if that can be solved uh, if it's a 4 cross 4 grid because i feel the number of nodes in that graph will be really big so which is i i don't really remember if you know it was a 4 cross 4 or a 3 cross 3 grid i vaguely remember the solution was this but i it is skipping my head i feel like i did not use this and you know used dp basically do not do not remember what the exact problem was more specifically what the constraints were were it was it a 3 cross 3 or a 4 cross 4 grid i'm sure either one is solvable um this was a difficult interview i was given 20 minutes to solve it i 15 or 20 something like that i was able to solve it and this was pretty much an anomaly after this i've given almost 10 15 remote dsa interviews and most of them have been fairly simple similar to the first problem here um, so now it's at a point where i feel pretty chill giving you know 
dsa interviews in a remote job the reason for it is i know they are a little too easy if i'm being honest um and mostly like a very simple ad hoc solution if you've done like dsa in india and you know prepared for icbc so that's the high level of how i would prepare for dsa how much of it is needed tldr is you do need it especially if you're targeting a fang um, or maybe you know a bigger company in india um they will ask for dsa probably throughout your life uh, preferably do it early and do it well so that you can solve problems via first principles and you don't have to go through the lead code grind again and again and when you're going through an interview process that's all i had for this one that was my dsa 2024 video i'll see you guys in 2025 where we'll talk again about dsa if it is relevant by then all right let's end it i will see you guys in the next one bye bye